Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at my newest fire alarm control panel, the Faraday MPC-2000. If you watch my channel frequently, you guys got a quick preview of this system during the um, new fire alarm devices video for, uh, it should have been for July, um, but I'm going to go back over um, in detail all the things I covered in that video for the people who didn't see it. And then as you can see, I have the little miniature display board. Um, that I built and you guys previously saw with the um, FCI FC72. Um, I have that hooked up here so we'll be able to test out this system and uh, see it in action. Uh, you'll notice that there is a, um, I guess say a change of venue for this video. I usually have it up against a uh, either a white backdrop upstairs or, or something more clean um, for my videos. But because of how uh, obnoxiously large this panel is it's currently down in the basement, so that's why you see the uh, little change of scenery down here. Um, it's about 30 inches by 30 inches and uh, about between 90 and maybe 110 pounds. Um, so it's, it's not terrible to move around, it's just not something that really fits anywhere else but down here. Um, for reference, I built the uh, little miniature display board to go right alongside the FCI FC72 which is in and of itself a pretty large panel uh, and you can see the size difference between this unit and that board. But anyways let's take a uh, look at the inside of the panel and then we'll go ahead and pull one of the stations and hear it go off. So with the door on the panel open it's easier to see exactly what's going on. There should be a large black um, like piece of metal that covers up all these circuit boards with some individual covers for the modules. I don't currently have one of those, but uh, I've managed to track down half of one for the um, upper row of modules, and I'm working on tracking down the, the second row. So I should have one of those in pretty quickly, but that doesn't matter for this right now because I would have taken them off anyways to show you guys the interior of the panel and all the boards. Um, like I just mentioned in that new Fire Alarm Devices video, I went pretty in-depth on exactly what all of these modules do so I've decided it's it's kinda not worth it to go over it again in a second video since I want to move on to actually testing the system which is one of the more exciting parts of the videos instead of just talking um, but the short facts about this vid um, about this panel there's the main CPU board and then one addressable channel that can support up to 198 devices there are six different notification appliance circuits that are spread across three um, SC2 modules there is one addressable relay circuit that provides, uh, or sorry, auxiliary relay circuit or card that provides um, activation of two distinct relays on that module that you can set up to activate however you want in the programming. Down in the second row, um, there are a total of uh, six power supplies, I guess if you count the battery charger as a power supply. But other than that, five power supplies. One of those is the main power supply for the CPU and addressable card. The rest all feed into the um, NAC circuits and the auxiliary relay. It's powered by three transformers, which each output around six amps, so there's a lot of power going into this unit, and it is currently charging two 18-amp-hour um, 12-volt uh, SLA batteries. So let's zoom in for a moment and take a quicker look at the uh, display and operating panel, and then we'll go ahead and test it. So this is the main control console on the MPC-2000. You can see it's a uh, it's a really old LCD screen because it's hardly backlit. It's just backlit enough to see it in the dark. Um, so it's relatively hard to see when the lights are on or on camera. You can see that there are seven or uh, seven different functions that you can get on this console: the system reset button, alarm silence, trouble silence, circuit cutoff, which is kind of like a disable on other panels, a drill button, the lamp test, which we can go ahead and do see everything light up, and then the system program key. Over on the indicators, there's the power on light, system alarm, and then there are separate LEDs for uh, system trouble, and then uh, trouble silenced in addition to the alarm silenced, and then separate indicators for input power faults, standby power faults, and system ground conditions. Um, like I just said a moment ago, the system has one addressable card. I only have one um, point wired in right now so um, it's everything I activate today is going to show up on the screen as pulse station number one on uh, module one 
point one. Yeah, um, module one in that case referring to the uh, the loop that it's on, not the actual physical module behind the pull station. Um, but pull stations being mentioned, that's a good segue into the devices we have installed on the mini board today that allow us to test the system out. So let's go ahead and take a look. For the notification appliances, I have two Cerberus Pyrotronics horns. These are both uh, MTLs. One of them is an MTLS uh, 1575 because it has the strobe there. Both of these are set on Chime, which on this panel with FWR doesn't sound like Chime at all. Um, but it's a little bit quieter than the horn, so it, it made it easier for testing this and getting it ready. Um, this is a Faraday panel, and these are obviously labeled as CP. But um, I do believe these are Faraday designs, so this is something you might uh, normally see on one of these panels out in the field. There's only going to be one pull station on the system today. Um, this is a single action Faraday T-bar. I believe the model number is 10561. Um, but I, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. Uh, the FCI station next to it, and then the I3 that's mounted up above, those aren't connected at all. They're just filling space on the back boxes from the last test that I did with this uh, board this morning. And that's because I currently only have one system sensor addressable module that works on the same protocol as this panel. Um, so I only have the one Faraday pull station hooked up, and that module is located right behind the pull station in the back box. It's a, it's a small... M501M uh, mini monitor module. So we're going to go ahead and pull the station now and activate the system. This panel actually has an incredibly long delay on the uh, addressable channel as all the communications go through. So what I'm going to actually try to do is pull the pull station here and then spin the camera around to the uh, the console display and try to catch the activation. And It might be uh, a little blurry in that transition but I think I can spin it back around to uh, catch everything going into alarm. So here we go. So go ahead and silence that. Um, I just have all of the signal circuits uh, programmed into continuous and silenceable uh, currently, so including the ones that aren't connected. So we're not getting any sort of audible silence or anything. Uh, you can hear the panel's internal buzzer is going off. Um, it's kind of weak sometimes, um, so I'm actually kind of happy that it's it seems to be sounding pretty good right now. A lot of times it's just kind of makes a little, I don't know, tiny buzzing noise, but that sounds pretty good. Uh, but we can go ahead and silence that. Um, I actually really like panels that have uh, little tiny electromechanical buzzers a lot. Um, so I think this is really, really cool. Um, the enunciators that Faraday made for these panels had the, the little buzzers in them too, and I remember one in a, uh, a medical building I used to go to that would sometimes be buzzing, so that's pretty interesting. Um, anyways, we can go ahead and reset the pull station, uh, which I'll just go ahead and do off camera because I'm sure you've all seen it reset hundreds of times, it's just the T-bar. Um, and then I can go ahead and reset the panel while I adjust the lighting a little bit here. Yeah, that's a bit better. Um, when this panel resets, it actually is almost a little bit excessive. It shuts everything down um, for a second and it actually performs a warm restart on the panel. Um, so there really is no difference between a warm restart on here and a system reset. Um, so we can go ahead and hit the button. You'll hear all of the relays on the power supplies shut off momentarily. Um, everything will go dark and then the system will restart. All 
All right, and there we go. Uh, everything is reset. You can see on the clock, it's uh, it's thinking that it's about 12:30 in 1995 right now. Uh, I could go in and change the clock setting, but it doesn't maintain the clock once the uh, like when the panel is power cycled. So I've kind of started forgetting to reset it. So that's why it still thinks it's 1995 uh, on the display. But anyways, I think that's about all I have to show for this panel right now. Um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm hoping that the recording of that chime noise didn't come across as too terrible on the microphone, because I can tell you that on FWR it didn't sound the prettiest um, here in person. Um, but if you guys have any questions regarding this system, I know I've only shown it briefly in about two videos now, and it's, it's pretty large and there's a lot going on. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything you want to see specifically. Um, you probably won't be seeing videos of this system for a while currently um, in the next couple months, but once I get everything all put together um, with the like the dress panel, and then I'm hoping to get, uh, like I mentioned a minute ago, one of the enunciators for this panel, which involves some work on the inside with uh, modules and additional connections to some of those uh, channels and power supplies within the panel. Um, then I'll be making more videos of this um, at that point. So thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.